good morning to everyone uh, i'm going to start with a very alarming fact uh, india is the largest uh, india has the largest number of preterm babies in the world so we constitute 26% of the entire global burden which is a lot india alone and uh, we are seeing now because of the preterm babies uh, many number now in the last 4 5 decades there has been a sprout of the nicus and the SNCUs, that is the special newborn care units. So, which is good because uh, these preterm babies have high mortality. So, we need these uh, care units to uh, uh, to treat them aggressively so that we can save their lives. But when it is concerned to eye, uh, the uh, potentially blinding disease that is retinopathy of prematurity uh, is 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 at an uprise now. So, uh, there was an epidemic when it started. It's not a new disease. This was there in the 1940s. that was the first epidemic when uh, unrestricted oxygen were given to the premature babies after then they realized that okay it's because of the oxygen that we are seeing rop so they brought down the oxygen they judicially judicially used the oxygen uh, 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 treatment to the baby but in the next uh, 1960s and 70s uh, the care was better the nicus were more so more premature babies were surviving but again that was the second epidemic where we had another sprout in the number but now in 2020 this is called the third epidemic now we are seeing again a lot of numbers especially in uh, developing economies like india china african countries now this is because the learning that we don't have to give too much of oxygen is not being passed on to all the doctors so what is retinopathy of prematurity we'll just have a quick overlook so the normal retinal development Uh, is you know when the baby is in utero, when the uh, infant is in utero, uh, uh, it around uh, takes 40 weeks for the retina to develop. So there's a peripheral retina and there's a central retina that is called the macula where the vision is at its best. So when the child is in utero, the vessels start developing from the center of the optic nerve, and they move towards the periphery. So if a baby is born preterm. So preterm WHO defines as births, which is uh, before completion of 37 weeks of gestation. So the normal gestation is 40, but if babies are born before 37 weeks of gestation, they are termed as preterm. So they'll be early preterm, that is before 34 or before 37. So, so this is in utero. They start dividing from the center and they move till the periphery. Now, if there is an insult, now the baby is born preterm. we'll see that there's an avascular retina there is a vascular retina and then ret retinopathy of prematurity develops that is there will be abnormal growth of the new vessels we'll talk about the risk factors which can start detaching the retina and the babies can land up with retinal detachment so uh, just i'll take you through few pictures now this is the picture of a normal fundus of an adult so this is the optic nerve these are the blood vessels this is the center part the macula and this is the periphery so if the vessels have gone till the periphery means it's normal so now this is a picture it doesn't look like the previous one that we saw so this is the picture of a immature uh, premature baby this is known as an immature retina it's normal so this is the optic nerve these are the vessels this is the avascular retina it, the vessels have to reach till the periphery they haven't reached yet so this is a normal fundus photo of a preterm baby so it's a immature retina once the baby reaches 40 weeks it will come till the periphery it should come till the periphery so now how does rop look like so in rop we have a vascular area and an avascular area so this is there are five stages broadly this is stage 1 so if we see here there's a faint line a very faint line between the vascular retina and the avascular retina so this is an early stage of rop stage 1 moving on to the second stage now the line is well defined it has now it's not a 2d line it's in 3d you see there's a height there's a volume so this now it's called a ridge so this is stage 2 rop in stage 3 if you see the line is broader it's it's more lifted there are a lot of new blood vessels lot of hemorrhages so this is known as stage 3 rop and of course if the babies are not screened timely not referred timely they land up with retinal detachment so stage 4 and 5 is retinal detachment so at this time you might see a white you will see a white reflex in the baby so if you are examining a baby and there is white reflex there are other causes which dr veena covered you have to immediately refer the child uh, another component that i want to touch upon is plus disease and aprop 
Now, uh, this image I showed initially, this is stage 2. You see the vessels are a little tortuous, but they're a little straight. But when you see AP ROP, this category of ROP, the vessels are very tortuous when you compare to the other stages. And you won't see any stage. It will be ill-defined. So these babies especially can land up with retinal detachment in a couple of days, like a day or two. So, uh, and why this is important, uh, this can be picked up by general ophthalmologists who are not even trained in retinal examination because this is a posterior disease. So if you dilate the babies, if in a hospital you have an ophthalmologist not trained in retina but they can dilate and even if direct, direct ophthalmoscope, they pick up the posterior part of the eye and if they see this, they can immediately refer and we can save the child's vision. So this is very APROP is on a rise in our country. I'll move on to that later. Why? Uh, so when do we screen? So NNF is the National Neotology Forum. So uh, along with the Indian chapter of ROP Society, they've come, up, they've come up with guidelines. Now the Indian guidelines are different from Western guidelines. Western guidelines, they screen babies who are less than 1.5 kgs. But in India, because of the suboptimal neonatal care, we screen even bigger babies because the care is not as great as it's in the western world. So the Indian screening scenario, uh, the criteria is a little different. So we screen babies uh, who are uh, around 1.75. Actually the initial uh, cutoff was given at 2 kilos. But then that will be a lot of babies. So we have come down. But there are some 2 kilo babies whom you should screen that I'll come to. So birth weight less than 1.7 kg, gestational age at birth 34, 35 weeks less than that if they're exposed to oxygen more than 30 days or even a week 10 days continuous oxygen whatever prongs hood uh, ventilatory support and babies very tiny babies born less than 28 weeks and weighing less than 1.2 kilos now there are some two kilo babies two kgs at birth preterm you have to screen them as well we, we don't have to really stick to 1.75 they might have other risk factors so i'll come to that so everything has to be taken into account so when do we screen now? So baby is born, the first retinal examination should not be later than four weeks of age. So four weeks, 30 days, one month, whichever way you want to remember. So the babies, the first screening should be at one month of life. In more than 28 weeks of gestation. Anyway, we can skip that. And if they're very tiny babies, 28 weeks, less than 1.2 kgs, they have to be screened as early as two weeks. We don't have to stick to the four week uh, criteria there. Another thing, if the baby is getting discharged from the hospital, SNCU, NICU, whatever be the day of life and they are preterm, it's better that we screen them because we have seen that, you know, if we think, okay, one month of life, they can go and come back, they might not come back and the ROP can hit the eye. So before they are discharged from preterm baby, especially, it's better that they, we screen them at the base hospital. Now, the other risk factors besides oxygen, preterm, low birth weight would be uh, respiratory distress syndrome, multiple birth transfusion given, multiple births, twins, triplets, sepsis, poor, uh, post, uh, poor postnatal weight gain is very, very important. If they're not gaining weight, it's very important. They can land up in ROP. And of course, apnea kept. So some babies will be better without oxygen for a few days and they'll get back to oxygen support. So all that is very important. We need to document all this. So this is one of our videos uh, of the screening that we do. So we have weekly screening. We visit four or five hospitals in and around Pondicherry. So this is at Rajiv Gandhi Hospital. So the babies are already dilated. So they know we are coming every Friday. So they dilate the babies, keep them ready. The file is ready. Uh, we go and check them with the indirect ophthalmoscope. Uh, so we put, we put a, a topical anesthetic drop. We put a speculum because you have to keep the eyes open and of course babies they won't rotate the eye and show you left and right so you need to depress and look at the corners of the eye with a, a depressor and this is the indirect ophthalmic examination now if you detect rop now the main stay of treatment and the gold standard still is laser therapy so laser therapy is again with the indirect ophthalmoscope there's a laser console in it and we ablate we give laser spots to the avascular retina so that will lead to shrinkage of the new vessels, it will flatten. So this still is the mainstay. So this is a few pictures before and after laser. So we see here there's a stage here. This is 360 degree laser done. The stage has regressed. Again a second picture you see I think stage 2, 3 here regressed very well after laser. 
Now there are few set of babies, like I said, that aggressive posterior ROP where you don't see any stage, they need injections. Not all of them need injections. This is more like a rescue treatment. When you have uh, vessels which are very close to the center of the retina, you cannot do laser there. You will hit the macula. So you have to give a rescue treatment with an injection. So the injection is anti-VEGF. So why the blood vessels are coming, the new blood vessels are sprouting because there is a excess of vascular endothelial growth factor. So you have to give something to combat that. So when you give this in a set of babies, not all, the vessels start growing towards the periphery. We keep following them weekly and once we feel okay the vessels have reached in the periphery and there is this bit of avascular retina, we go in with the laser and uh, ablate those areas. So again, if you inject the medicine, the drug in the eye, again, the new vessels and always flatten and shrink, but they need very close follow-up. So this is a picture before injection. You can see this is APROP. There is no stage, very tortuous, dilated vessels. After injections, you see that the vessels are straightening and they're moving towards the periphery. But some babies don't reach till here, so they might need laser later on. Very important slide. Uh, how do we prevent ROP? Like I said, we're in the third epidemic. So the most important thing in our side that we can do is talk to our colleagues, not pediatricians, anybody, just spread the message that 100% oxygen has to be avoided. You have to give blended oxygen so uh, with air. So you've seen a lot of places they give oxygen with a funnel or directly oxygen prongs. So that is not blended with room air. So you have a hood where you give oxygen which is blended with air. This, there was a study uh, from our uh, team in Coimbatore headed by Dr. Parag Shah. So they have seen that in India, the ROP incidence is a lot, especially that aggressive kind uh, in larger babies, not even very tiny babies because of the 100% oxygen practice. So when you cut down, when you give it with hood, when you blend it with room air, uh, the incidence is coming down from 30 to 0. So that is the difference. So this has to be, this message has to be propagated amongst our fraternity. And when a baby is born, you put pulse socks, right? So you don't, you don't need an SpO2 of 100. If, it's, if the baby is maintaining between 88, 92, 95, it is okay. Of course, it's at the discretion of the neonatologist. But SpO200, you don't need that because you don't need that much of aggressive oxygen therapy here because all this, if avoided, can prevent ROP. Now, uh, like I said, the burden is huge in our country. So the outreach ROP program, that is the telescreening that is uh, being done in the country, a lot of places, Arvind has the largest telescreening program and a lot of places in Karnataka as well and Delhi. So what we do is that we have a dedicated team. So there's a dedicated vehicle, there's a dedicated team, staff, nurses, technicians who are trained in using a portable fundus camera. This is known as RETCAM. So this is a portable camera. It costs around nearly a crore but very useful, very sturdy. You can take it in the van anywhere. And uh, the, uh, I'll just show you, there are a few pictures here. So this program is being run in, uh, in uh, multiple centers of Arvind. We are yet to start at Pondicherry. So where you take the portable camera, now like the team in Coimbatore, they are able to cater to 18 towns every week, which is so many towns in two states, Kerala and Tamil Nadu. So 18 towns every week they visit Monday to Saturday. So there is uh, there is no chance that you will miss a preterm baby. So uh, it's quite it's quite uh, uh, convenient. You, what they do is a group of sisters and technicians. They go, they feed in the data. The sisters are trained to take uh, images from the wet cam. So this is a camera uh, which you just put it on the baby's eye, open the eye with a speculum with a gel. It captures from ora ora serrata to ora serrata. So there's 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 no uh, chance that you're going to miss anything. They upload the images on the computer. It goes to Dr. Parag. This is Dr. Parag's team. It goes to Coimbatore. He'll see the images immediately, give a diagnosis, advice, send them back, and then they accordingly give the management to the parents. So either if it needs to be referred, the baby has to come to the base hospital at Coimbatore. And if it needs a review one or two weeks, they're counseled. So thorough counseling with pamphlets and everything is done to the parents, which is very important. So another thing now, if there are babies in ICU, they cannot be moved to the base hospital. The team goes there, whether they need laser or injections, that can also be done. A very important aspect, the medical legal aspects of concerns of ROP. Now, missing out ROP, uh, it's, it's quite common and there are a lot of cases. Now, there have been four or five huge cases. The largest compensation which was given to the family was from a case in Tamil Nadu where 
the baby was preterm 29 that is like 1.8 crores but very sad for the family it's 29 week a baby uh, young, a small birth weight 1.2 uh, kilos uh, they were failed to inform about rop screening when they went for a vaccination at 4 and a half months of age they noticed white reflex and the baby had developed stage 5 rop in both the eyes so baby is blind so so there are a lot of medical legal aspects into it uh, we have to be very careful not for ourselves it's for the child because the child is blind for life so uh, thank you i think all of us uh, together with the team uh, of ophthalmologists our uh, pediatric colleagues our uh, um, staff and all our friends if we spread the message about oxygen not giving 100% spo2 92 is fine i think we can ensure to give these babies the best possible chance at sight so very important i think when we are examining a patient for example a general physician is seeing a patient and there is a tiny baby with them we can just take a minute to inquire whether the baby was preterm whether everything was fine you know we can pick up uh, things like that so i think that way